What's happening guys? Welcome to part two in the series on building a machine learning model that predicts used car prices using IBM Machine Learning Studio. Now in the first video, we looked at how to set up our Watson Machine Learning Studio environment. In this video, we're going to be loading up our data and beginning the visualization process. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Okay, so we're gonna start off back at our dashboard platform. So this is where we left off last time and where we got our environment set up to. So from here, we're going to start adding our data. Now to add our data, remember, as I said, one of the most important buttons in this whole environment is the add to project button. So to add data, we'll hit add to project and we'll come over here and we'll add data. Now a little word on the data that we're going to be using. So this, data set comes from one of the Kaggle competitions. So it's a big used car data set. It is quite large. So eventually later on to speed up our training, we might cut that down and focus on a few different makes and models. But for now, let's just load it all up and take a look. Side note, I'll also include a link to that data set in the comments or sorry, in the description below. Alrighty, let's hit data. And as soon as you hit data, you'll get this little side tray that pops up. So what we'll do is we'll just hit browse and go and grab our data. So here I've got it inside of the what's in studio folder and it is inside of here and it's just called true car listing. So I'll give you a link to this same data set. So let's hit open and this will start loading up our data set. Now give that a few moments, there's roughly 852,000 records in there, so there's quite a fair bit. That being said, it should still load up reasonably quick. Now once you've got this data set loaded, it'll actually become available under the assets tab, so let's just wait for that to load up. All right, so our data's finished loading and the loading area has cleared. So now if we come over to our assets tab, you can see that our data set is now loaded. You can see that the type is data asset, it's been created by myself and it was last modified when we loaded it. That's all great. Now, if we wanna start interrogating some of this data, we can actually just click into the data set and you'll get a preview of the data. Now this is based on the first, I think it's 1000 rows of data. So it's good to know that this just sort of gives you an idea of the profile. So it's sort of like using the head function in Python, but keep in mind, it's not a complete representation of your data set. So as you can see, the preview is just a thousand rows. So the cool thing from here is that you can see the different columns. So you've got price, year, mileage, city, state, VIN, make, and model. You can also see the data types that they've imported through as so you can see that everything's coming through as string, which isn't quite right, but we'll fix that up in our data clearing process. Now, if you scroll through, you can actually still see quite a fair bit of data. But again, if you wanted to get some more information, you can actually hit this profile tab. Now you do need to create a data profile and it does take a little while, but it is quite good because it does give you some really interesting metrics on your data. So you'll actually see the frequency of different elements within the top 5,000 rows of data. You'll get some summary stats, min, max, standard deviation, and mean, which is pretty cool. So, I mean, it gives you a nice idea of the data that you're working with. But again, it's only based, this is based on the first 5,000 rows of data. So in the preview tab, it's the first thousand. In the profile tab, it's the first 5,000. So again, it's not enough to make any data cleaning decisions. You'll actually need to work with the entire data set for that. But we're gonna take a look in it to that using a Jupyter Notebook. So let's give it a sec, let's let this data profile build and then we can start interrogating. All right, so our profile's finished generating. Now, if it doesn't update automatically for you, just refresh the screen and you should get something that looks a little bit like this. Now, you get a lot of information from this page, but again, just keep in mind, it's based on the first 5,000 rows of data. So here you can see the top frequencies, uh, as I said, you've got a bunch of unique, stat uh, sorry, not unique statistics, but you've got a bunch of statistics. So the minimum, maximum, mean, standard deviation, where it's able to be calculated. So these are obviously numeric type attributes. So you've got price, year, and mileage. Now you've also got city, state, VIN, and a bunch of others. If you scroll across, you can see that the majority of the 
cars or models in the top 5,000 rows are all Acuras. And you've got a bunch of different models here as well. This is pretty cool, but again, you can't do too much else with this because it's only the first 5,000 rows. Now, if you want, what you can actually do is spin up a Jupyter Notebook to start interrogating your data in a little bit more detail. Now, the cool thing is from within Watson Studio, you can do this. So you don't need to step out and spin up a local notebook. You can actually do it within the same data platform. So let's do that and take a look at our data in a little bit more detail. So for this, we're gonna jump out of our data asset view and we're going to go back to our dashboard. And now we're going to add another thing to our project. So we're gonna be adding a notebook this time. So let's hit add to project and hit notebook. And from here you can name your notebook. So let's call it used car visualization. Used car visualization as the description as well. And hit create notebook. So we're gonna leave it as Python 3 and hit create. So this will spin up our notebook and then we can start playing around. Alrighty, so our notebook is now up and ready. So you can tell because of the fact that you've got a notebook in front of you. So slightly different to Jupyter Notebooks, but I mean, it's still the same. It's a little bit more modern, but you've still got cells that you can run uh, all your same functionality that you had in a Jupyter Notebook still applied. So if you add, so shift enter is going to add additional lines. You can still delete by hitting double D and it's going to remove lines. Now, if you wanna add data, however, you're not going to just be reading a CSV or getting it from a separate database. The cool thing here is that if you've already got a data asset inside of Watson Studio, you can actually import that into your notebook. Now to do that, it's actually relatively straightforward. So just come over to here where you've got the IO tab and hit that and you'll see that you've got that same data set that you uploaded in step uh, in previous to this or in the earlier start of this video. Getting a bit tongue tied there. Now, if you want to import this, all you need to do is hit insert into code and insert pandas data frame. Now, because we're gonna be working with pandas, it's just gonna make it a whole bunch easier if we do that from the get go. So let's hit insert pandas data frame and you can see now that you've got a cell of text added. Now what this is going to do is create a new data frame called DF data one, which represents the data set that you've got in that CSV. This is the entire data set as well, by the way, not just the first 5,000 records of data. To make our lives a little bit easier, we're gonna rename this data frame rather than being called DF data one, we're just gonna call it DF and we're going to run that cell. So once that cell's run, we should have our data in our CSV. Now we can start interrogating that a little bit. So let's just check. And you can see, looks like we've got the same column. So we've got price, year, mileage, city, state, VIN, make, and model. You can also check out what D types we're working with. And you can see that it's picked up price as an integer, year, and mileage as well. We've got city, state, bin, make, models, object, which seems pretty okay. Now we can also start delving into to some more summary statistics and actually work out what we're actually dealing with here. We can do that using the describe method. And from here, we'll get summary statistics on the integer variables. So you can see we've got the count, we've got mean, standard deviation, min, uh, as well as your different quartiles and the max. Now. We can also run this same method, but on our object variables to get some summary statistics for those. So we can run df.describe, but this time we're gonna pass in a parameter. So we'll say include, and we wanna include the objects. Oh, sorry, it's object, not objects. And this should give us a similar data frame, but you can see now that we've got our summary statistics for city, state, VIN, make a model. This is interesting, right? Because you can see how many cities we've got in our data set, how many states, uh, how many unique VINs. So it looks like there's possibly some duplicates in there. 
So you can see that that particular that VIN there, or the fact that we've got 852,122 VINs and we've got less unique values. So there's definitely duplicates in the data set in terms of cars. Now we've got 58 unique makes and 2,736 different models. Most popular make seems to be Ford and the Silverado. So, and a lot of our data seems to be coming from Houston, Texas. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it gives you an idea of what you're actually dealing with. Now we can take that a little bit further. So let's have a look at what we're actually dealing with here. So we've got price, we've got year, we've got mileage. One of the interesting things that sort of stands out to me is the fact that we've got quite a fair few cars with relatively low mileage. Now, this might actually stand out as a bit of an outlier because what we're actually interested in are cars that are, are relatively used. So we can filter our data set and just grab out the cars that have less than thousand miles and you can see that it sort of varies so we've got some relatively new cars here they've only got 10 miles and we've got five six we can take a look at how many we've got all right so we've got about 8751 cars with less than a thousand what about less than a hundred so 4548 which is still pretty high so I mean a hundred miles I wouldn't necessarily consider that to be a used car. So when we come to our data cleaning step, what we might actually do is remove some of those cars just so that it doesn't really skew our data so much. What we're really interested in are cars that are relatively well used. So, I mean, we might be able to make a judgment call and say, look, we're only interested in cars that have a thousand plus miles of mileage. If we're dealing with new cars, we'll have a separate model for that. So I mean, we'll keep that in mind when we come to our data cleaning step, but it's a good thing to know and it's a good thing that we've picked it up. Now, another thing that we might want to take a look at is the correlation between variables. So we can see that we've got our price here and mileage. We might want to take a look at how those play together. Now, this is relatively simple. We can just type in df.core and it will give us our correlation. So you can see it's perfectly correlated if it's the same variable. Uh, you can see that price and year are positively correlated. So a higher year leads to a higher price. Now that may seem counterintuitive, but if you think about it, a higher year is going to mean a newer car, which means it's going possibly going to have less mileage. It's just going to be more expensive. So that makes sense. Higher mileage leads to, or it's negatively correlated to price. So obviously the more used the car is, the less that it's likely to cost. Uh, and the year is quite negatively correlated to mileage. Now that makes sense because the older the car is, the more miles it's likely to have. So the lower the year number, the higher the mileage. So that sort of makes sense as well. Now what we can do rather than looking at it in this table is we can actually visualize this using some viz tools. Now let's use Seaborn because it's my favorite. And we've got Seaborn now, and we should probably import Matplotlib as well. So we're just going to import Matplotlib, uh, PyPlot from Matplotlib as PLT, and then we're going to use the heat map from Seaborn. So let's include a comment there. So heat map from Seaborn, SMS dot heat map, and we can pass in our correlation. It should give us that. And let's just remove a top line by running plot.show. And you can see we've got a relatively nice visualization that sort of replaces this little table over here. I mean, it's giving you the same information, but it's a nicer way to visualize. So that's a little bit of visualization of the correlation. Now, what we might want to take a look at as well are the different makes and models that we've got within our data set. So again, we can use Seaborn to visualize for this. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna strip out our makes and models. So let's do that. So we're gonna go DF, and we're going to filter out our columns and so make, uh, let's grab models first. And make, let's just check that works. And it should be make. 
All right, so we've just got our model and make, and then let's group by make. Let's check that out. And sorry, we need to add count. Perfect. All right, so we've got it summarized now. So this gives us the count for each of the different makes. Now, what we can do is let's just reset the index so we can reference it. And then we're going to create a plot. So, and we are going to be creating a bar plot here. So, SMS of bar plot. Uh, we're going to say y equals model, x equals make, and data equals makes. And all right, so we've got a visualization. It's not that great, it's a little bit small, so we can bump that size up. And I think 15.5 has worked pretty well. And let's just run plot.show as well. Uh, we should probably rotate our axis to make it a little bit more relevant. Equals 90. So this is just going, let me explain what we've got here. So we're resizing our graph. And then here we're rotating our axis, creating our plot using the seaborn, and here we're just rendering it nicely. Show. Alrighty, that's looking a little bit better. So this visualization actually looks pretty cool. So what do we have here? So we've got Chevy, Ford, Nissan, and Toyotas standing out pretty clearly and but we've got quite a fair few different makes and models in there so we've got a few ferrari that's yeah, pretty cool and a tesla alrighty so i mean that sort of shows you how, what types of visualizations you can do using what's a machine learning studio so this is really just a notebook inside of what's a machine learning studio but again you've still got that full functionality and that flexibility to sort of do whatever you want here now, in the next video, we're going to start cleaning our data and building some features that allow us to build a better predictive model. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right into that. If you found this video useful, be sure to like, share, and subscribe it. Peace.